So the title of this video that I'm thinking of selling my A7S III sounds very clickbaity. But let me tell you, it's not a lie. And we can go over why this FX3 might replace my A7S III for the ways that I use it. So let's talk about it. Hey guys, I'm the Tactical Traveler. I'm just a straight shooter who tells it like it is. All the gear that I review on my channel, I've either purchased with my own money or I've rented it with my own money. Rarely, some companies will send me something to try and review, but I never use affiliate links, so I don't try and drive you to buy things that you don't need. The only way you can really support my channel is by clicking on the subscribe button down below. Maybe giving this video a thumbs up if you like it or, or a thumbs down. It's up to you. Let's talk about the FX3. So my last video I made about the FX3 was really right after I got it and I hadn't used it much. I did a quick little sample video here inside. Like everyone else says, this is essentially an A7S III in a cinema body. For me, I bought the A7S III to be a second photo camera, sort of a backup, and then my primary video camera. I've been transitioning more to video work and I needed a second video camera, so I ordered an FX6, which by the way, we're recording on now. This is the first vlog. This isn't really a vlog. This is the first video I've made on it on my channel, so let me know if you think it looks any better. I made a purchase of the FX6. That was like a unicorn. It took forever to come. So in the meantime, I had work. I needed a second camera, hence I bought this FX3. Now this, along with my FX6, can kind of be my video kit. And it's got me thinking, do I need to keep that A7S3? I think when the A7 IV comes out, I'll probably pre-order it, sell the A7S3, because I don't really need three video cameras. And this does essentially give you the same image. However, that change in ergonomics, I kind of like it. Now you'll see the way I got it set up here. I've got the small rig half cage on it and I've got the little, uh, what is this microphone called? I can never remember. Yeah, this is it right here. So it's the ECM B1M. I'm very creative and catchy name for these things. That's the microphone I have on top and it works with a multi-interface shoe. Oh, and we can't forget the best part is this Tilta little hand strap. If I need to get better external sound, I'll use the top handle with XLR inputs. I was gonna do this video outside, but I'm in South Florida and it rains every day. For vlogging though, look at this. Boom, right in there with this little mic, the 20 millimeter 1.8 from Sony, forward facing screen, the small rig half cage. You too can tell your friends that you vlog on a cinema camera. It's just nice and small and compact. I used to rig up my A7 S3 a lot with V mounts and everything. And I guess I would still do that with this if it's gonna be on a tripod for like a, like a B camera on a long interview. There's some jobs you don't need the big FX6 because I know everybody has probably put out a video about the differences between this camera and the A7 S3, but you clicked on mine because you wanna hear my, my thoughts. One of the things that I dislike about this. Let's let's get that out of the way, what I dislike. I dislike the lack of the viewfinder. I like the form factor. It doesn't have this hump like here on top. Even with a cage on it, it's still a little smaller height-wise than the, I guess this makes it tall. I wish I could take that off small rig. But anyways, I don't use the viewfinder for a lot when I'm filming, but I do use it a lot to review my footage, especially when you're outside in bright sunlight. The other thing I don't like is this screen. This screen is, I mean, it's a terrible screen. It's hard to judge your exposure. It's hard to see if you're in focus. It's just, you know, you'd think if they made a cinema camera, they took away the viewfinder, they would have really put a high-end screen on it. I think they missed the mark on that one. That's my main complaints. The viewfinder thing, not a big complaint. I just wish it kind of had one, mostly because the screen sucks so bad. What I like about it, let's talk about that. I like that it has the same amazing image quality for video as the A7S III. It's chunkier. I just feel like I got a nice grip on it. I like the, the top record button up here. I really like the front record button. I use that one a lot. I don't use the zoom rocker a lot for the clear image zoom, you could. I don't really care that it's labeled iris and white balance and ISO on top. I've customized all these buttons to be what I want them to be anyways, because I don't really look at the labels. If you're having to look at what your button says to press it, and that's important to you, you need to practice more with your camera. I really like the form factor. I also like the way this grip is shaped a little different. If you really grip this camera, I think the way it was intended to be gripped, almost like you rotate your hand around this way a little bit more. Thumb right there on the uh, record button. Your index finger is right here for the rocker and you can move your joystick around. For me, it's really comfortable and works really well. These buttons back here are like when I'm gonna stop and adjust something, but for the most part, when I'm just moving and grooving, it's right here, right here. I just, I feel like this is a really nice form factor and I like it a little bit better than my A7S III because when you're, when you're gripping this guy, like now it already feels weird. You have to hold this one 
more like this, like a traditional photo camera that you'd put up to your eye. This is just, it's perfect. It's a it's a perfectly comfortable thing in my hand for video. I feel like I might have beat a dead horse there with those ergonomics, but everyone says the ergonomics are different. It's a A7S III in a cinema body. Well, it makes a difference. These ergonomics are important. And this camera, if you are primarily using this for video, when I say primarily, I mean like 90, 95% video, this is the camera to get. But if you are the kind of person like me, when I bought the A7S III and I needed a second photo camera, also a primary video camera, this was the right choice for me. The viewfinder's amazing. The photography in this, this doesn't get the credit it deserves for photography. And I realize the FX3 will shoot the same quality pictures, but ergonomically, this is gonna work better for photography. And if I use this alongside my A9, they're almost identical when you have them in your hand and you feel the ergonomics of these things. It's, it's just, it's really easy when I, use like the double camera strap and I'm switching between camera to camera. I don't, I have to think about which camera did I take that with? I don't even remember. I don't feel like I'm in a hurry to sell this thing, but I do feel like when the a7 IV comes out, I'm selling this. I've actually considered selling it sooner and maybe getting an a7R4, but I don't know if I want those big files. Uh, ideally two of the a9 twos would be perfect for me. This is, is coming up for sale very soon. That's how much I like the FX3 that I'm willing to part with, arguably anyone would say the camera of the decade. I mean, that A7S III is awesome. It shoots video as good as the FX3. There's no difference. Ergonomically, it's a little bit different, but the video quality coming out of it, shoot, it's, it's almost as good as the cinema camera we're on right now, the FX6. So if you're gonna be someone who shoots photos and video equally, you cannot go wrong with the A7S III. That is an amazing camera. And you're gonna get pretty close video quality to a $6,000 cinema camera. When you use this guy right here, you're gonna lose that ability to take, well, you don't lose the ability to take pictures. That's probably the wrong way to say it. You, I guess you lose the ergonomics that are designed for photography. This guy is ideal if you're primarily a video shooter and you may occasionally wanna take a snapshot or two, but I don't think your photos are gonna be any worse on this, but it just ergonomically doesn't really work as well for photos. Here's a little complaint. Let me throw this here out at you. So the FX6, it came with, I guess I can take it out of the bag now, right? We're not sending this back. So this, I'm so prepared. So prepared for this. Talk amongst yourselves. Okay. So the FX6, it came with this little guy right here. I don't even know if you can see it. If Sony will let, let it focus on, cover my face. Okay, so it came with this. It's kind of like a little cold shoe. In the top handle of the FX6 in the back, there's like these little like notches that this goes in. It snaps in there and it gives you a cold shoe on the top handle of the FX6. Why in the world could they have not put those same little plastic notches? This could have popped in right here on this guy and then you could have had the ability to do that. They could have put it back here. Sony, why couldn't you just put this on there? You could Velcro it on there, I guess. But then you could run, you know, like a Rode Wireless Go or something like that on top of this guy, some other kind of lav mic. Big mistake on that one, Sony. You, you included it with the FX6. This came out after. You didn't think of that when you designed it? Come on. The other thing about this is they claim that it's a cageless design. It's not a cageless design. I've tried stuff on it. So here's the configuration I'm currently running with. It gives me the Arca Swiss on the bottom here. It gives me a cold shoe on the side. I can put the top handle on it. I mean, if, you, if you're the kind of person that likes a handle out of the side, you can do this and have your handle out of the side. I might order the Tilta cage for this. This is the small rig cage. And I gotta say, small rig always has great value don't they? Isn't their value so good for what you get from them? This cage was like under a hundred bucks. Took a few weeks to come in. Here, what's the bottom line on this? I've rambled long enough. FX3 is the camera for you if you're primarily a video shooter. If you have an FX6 or an FX9 and you're looking for that B camera and you're not concerned with the photo taking ability of the camera, FX3 is, is the camera to get. The A7S III for me is probably going bye-bye. Second photo camera is probably going to join the family and we'll say bye to the probably the greatest camera ever made, the A7S III. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. I hope this video made a little bit of sense. I just wanted to kind of update you guys on what I thought about this camera. I've used it a little bit and hopefully give you guys an idea if you're on the fence a little bit about whether or not you want to get this FX3, an A7S III, or God forbid you wait seven years for an, a, an FX6 here like I waited. It's been so exciting to get this camera and I'm still learning to use it. Whole nother video is coming out about that because there's a lot of things that people don't tell you. Like I think 
some of the people that have these cinema cameras, they're so knowledgeable that they forget a person who doesn't and doesn't have one of those cameras or never use one of those cameras. They forget some of the things that are so obvious to them that, that like a guy like me doesn't know and they don't tell you. I'm going to make a video kind of covering some of those things. So make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. We will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye. Thank you.